<laughs> What's up, bro? Cheers, baby. What are we doing today? Getting hydrated. Gotta get ready to go in the ocean, baby. Let's do it. We're getting geared up. Checklist complete. Turbo brick? Turbo brick, yeah. She's bricky, she's boxy, and she's turboed. I get a walkie-talkie? This is already a good day. What's going on? We're here today with Logan, who's pretty much just a legendary Maine wilderness expert, main guide. Certified main guide. No there you deal. go. Yep, that's, that's what it is. And he's gonna show me the ropes today as we're gonna paddle about a two mile each direction paddle in the ocean in sea kayaks going off the tip of essentially Harpswell, Maine. Um, apparently this is shark infested waters so I'm a little nervous. They're around. Yeah, Great They're... Whites. Yeah, not just a shark. But the Great White Shark. Yeah. They're coming in. Yeah. <laughs> We're paddling with Great Whites today apparently uh, so that's that's definitely gonna be an element. Uh, this is really about my second time ever paddling a sea kayak out in the ocean. So I'm really looking forward to learning from Logan today. He's gonna show me all of the sort of procedures for being safe and just being knowledgeable out on the water. You're gonna go from zero to hero today, my guy. Wow. Uh, the, the thing is, everybody thinks they can just jump in a kayak and go out in the ocean. But what happens if you flip over, it's not like a regular kayak where you can just get back on. I mean, that thing gets waterlogged, it weighs more than a car, you can't get back in and you're just you're becoming hypothermic. And just so we can make sure Logan's not full of horse shit, I got the official L.L. Bean kayaking checklist here. Spot, dude, and, right? uh, you know, I'm going to quiz him. And if he doesn't make sure we have all these things on the L.L. Bean checklist, well, I highly doubt his credibility. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. So we just got here to where we're going to be launching. Here at the tip of Harpswell. And getting the kayaks off the boat or off the <laughs> kayaks off the boat yeah, car the boat. it's kind of a boat <laughs> it doesn't float it's a boat that don't float All right, so we've pretty much consolidated all the gear down to what we're gonna be bringing on the boats. And we've got everything down here at our launch point. Now we're just kind of packing all our gear. Cool. Yeah, shouldn't be too crazy, just a day trip. And then really just hit it. We got some wind coming in um, on shore, so blowing against our face on the way out, and then, which is nice, because we'll have a tailwind on the way back in. So Logan's going with the dry suit option for attire, and so I'm kind of going the wetsuit route. He's going the dry suit route. Yeah, skirt up, baby. All right, it's time for me to skirt up. Feel, oh yeah, wait, I guess you just hop in, see how it is like there. All right. We're about to paddle two miles out to sea to a island where there used to be like an old admiral's private estate on the island. And uh, we're crossing some shark infested waters. So we're about to get to paddling. Yeah, buddy. We got some boats behind us. I'm gonna start paddling so I'm not drifting. So if the seas get rough and you're having a hard time, the best thing, the most stable thing you can do is grab somebody else's boat, right? So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take our paddles gonna buddy him up just like this and I can grab all the way over like this and he can't literally like he could try and flip his boat and it's not gonna go anywhere um, and you can see I'm really confident too right so if I grab his boat I'm gonna grab right, across your legs. right I can do all sorts of crazy stuff shit, right man. I can go upside down and I can come back up right so 
you've got a hand right here. Boats are super, like they're so buoyant, right? You can put all of your body weight on this and really learn how to trust it. So give it a shot, man. Grab a cross. You don't have to do what I just did, but yeah, grab a cross. And then really just kind of learn how to trust. Oh yeah, I see. Right? And I got you too, I'll keep you close. There you go. Yeah. Nice, man, well done. And that way you can also kind of feel the edge of your boat too. Like every boat has a tipping point. Your perception has a much further tipping point than my boat. So it's a classic skill, just like rafting up with a bunch of friends, eating some snacks, but you do want to make sure you know where the wind is going, because it's just, you're, you're always moving on the ocean no matter what. Yeah. Nice, man, good job. Checkpoint one. We've been paddling for about uh, maybe like almost an hour and we have sight of our landing point right back there and uh, we're probably only about a 10 minute paddle away from our final destination. So not too bad. There is really no one out here today. It's pretty much like the first nice day of the season. It's like early April here in Maine and uh, yeah it's a beautiful day. Sun shining. Not too windy, so we're just gonna finish up this paddle and get onto the island. Nestled just a few miles off the coast of Maine, Eagle Island State Historic Site and National Historic Landmark receives about 6,000 visitors each season who tour the summer home of North Pole Explorer Admiral Robert Peary, who purchased the property in 1881 for only $200. The island provided a perfect spot for Peary's summer home that overlooks Casco Bay and the surrounding islands. So we're just chilling at the Admiral's house. We got the private invite. We're just waiting for the rest of the crew to show up. We're just starting on the uh, on the fine dining. We've got our sliced provolone here, as well as some hard boiled eggs that I just finished up. Let's see what we got in here. Oh, strawberries. That's nice. I got a kiwi and some beef jerky and jelly beans. And uh, silverware is an unnecessary weight, so finger mm. food and pasta. Yep and then we're gonna explore this island.
Oh, nice, dude. Little cutie, dude. Yeah, he's just cold. He's coming out of the cracks, man. Cool. That was cool. Look at this huge egg, dude. Found an eggshell. It's probably a goose. Probably a goose. Maybe an osprey. Do the geese just lay eggs on their migration? I wonder. Or if this is like a nesting ground. But this is a big egg. Yeah. It's a big egg. You think it's a seagull egg? Could be, yeah. Maybe like a greater blackback gull. They're like the size of a small eagle, to be honest. So we just took a little casual walk around this island. And it's pretty sweet. We found ton of driftwood and buoys and junk over on the other side of the island and then found a baby snake that was kind of cool and a bird egg so lots of lots of little treasures on this island pretty small island we already made it back to the house here and we saw this little we saw this like big old monument on an island like just on the next island over about to get a view of it right here and so I think we're gonna pack up on this island and paddle over to the next island and get a good view of this little mono monument way in the distance there you can kind of see this like structure and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna paddle across the sea there and uh, try and find a place to land on that island and then we'll paddle back home from that one, so. All right, so that was a nice visit to Eagle Island. And now we're about to head out to this like ancient alien monolith. See. That was definitely a little tester, but uh, we made it through. Now we're almost there. We're about halfway to that that island out there. We found this little cove here on this island. Just got to find a way to actually get out of the boat. All right, so we made it up onto this little island here. And uh, we got the boats hopefully secured. The tide's coming in, so hopefully the boats don't get taken away. I don't think they will. We're gonna go explore that tower thingy. Check it out, maybe fly the drone a bit. Freaking gorgeous though, it's a beautiful day. I can't see shit. <laughs> so we made it into the creepy hole tower okay, yeah. and there's a safe in here. That's so sick. maybe there's like millions of dollars in it. Oh, dude. Probably some equipment to be honest. There is a bottle. Ooh, Damn, there's like a little fuse block. It's 
probably used to be a lighthouse. It's like a bird's nest. Dude, what is this? This is Ron Virgin Rum. There's a note on it. Dude. Take a swig. Let's read this note. Friday, damn, Friday 4th of October 2013. To whom it may concern, these supplies are strictly for the use of shipwrecked sailors and are forbidden to be taken off the island. These supplies were donated and brought onto Little Mark Island by the crew of the schooner Alert and Catch Twake. We hope this helps. Perry Davis and Bethany Smonnelly Davis. Wow. Well, they were certainly considerate with providing a way to get shit-faced <laughs> if you're <laughs> stranded. So I don't think we're stranded, so I don't think we're allowed to drink it. I can change real fast. Yeah. Should we get stranded? <laughs> <laughs> Logan's getting crazy. Alex Honnold status. It's probably solid. Kind of tempted. Let me know what's up there. Island number two, down. We're still cruising. Now we are in the home stretch, headed back to the shore. We've probably paddled like what, three miles so far today? Yep. So probably got another like two miles left yeah, back two home. Miles back. Two miles back home. This is freaking awesome, honestly. Yeah, like, right, right. There's no other vessel that you can get, so like there's no other boat that you can just do what we did. Right, like paddle up into the rocks and then hike around that island. True. Easy. Dude, we just freaking paddled like five or six miles today in the ocean. And uh, dude, thanks for taking me. Let's uh, let's get dry, get our stuff packed up, and get home. Roll, dude. Let's do it.